So not only are there different mechanisms of resistance, different kinds of bacteria rely differently on different mechanisms. So for example, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis, is basically resistant to all of the drugs that we use to treat it. And all of the resistance mechanisms for Mycobacterium tuberculosis are point mutations on the genome. And there's basically no known role for what's called horizontal gene transfer, the transfer of genes from one bacteria to another. Part of the reason is that Mycobacterium tuberculosis gets into our lungs, it has a very slow doubling time, and during the time that it's in our lungs, it's somewhat protected from the antibiotics, and because it has that slow doubling time, it has a little bit of a protection, so the antibiotics aren't that effective anyway. It provides an opportunity for Mycobacterium tuberculosis to select for mutations that provide resistance. When there's resistance, Mycobacterium can grow even though you've got the antibiotics. Because Mycobacterium tuberculosis is buried in our lungs, it's much harder for it to share resistance. So if I have Mycobacterium tuberculosis and it evolves resistance, I don't by the way, then if my Mycobacterium tuberculosis evolves resistance, it's much harder for it to share it, it, that resistance with you or with your Mycobacterium tuberculosis. It would be much easier actually for, my, for the bacteria that I have to just infect you when I cough and then they can take over and if you're on the drugs it won't matter because they're resistant. So we're not sharing individual genes where the sharing is the whole bacteria. Um, if we look at things like E. coli, Salmonella and Klebsiella like we're studying in the course it's a totally different story. Um, for example, there are over a thousand types of beta-lactamases. Beta-lactamases are the enzymes that break down beta-lactams. There's over a thousand types of them. And almost all Antibiotic resistance is transferred by horizontal gene transfer. I stress almost, not all of it, but almost all of it is transferred by horizontal gene transfer. Especially plasmids, occasionally maybe phages, but there's mechanisms where E. coli can share with Salmonella, can share with Klebsiella, and so on. In fact, the really bad Klebsiella, the carbapenem resistant Klebsiella, the gene that provides the resistance to carbapenem is encoded on a plasmid that can spread from cell to cell to cell. As long as one cell has that plasmid, all of the others can get it. And then another pathogen, Acinetobacter baumnii. This little bugger is naturally competent. What that means is, when Acinetobacter is hanging out in the soil, where it likes to live normally, it can just take up DNA. It doesn't care. It may take up that DNA normally to use as a food source, but if that DNA encodes an antibiotic resistance from some other bacteria, and that antibiotic resistance is useful, then Acinetobacter will either keep it as a plasmid or integrate it into its chromosome, express those genes, and now all of a sudden it's resistant to bacteria. So each of these bacteria have evolved resistance in a different way, but in each case they're resistant to all of the known antibiotics.